celebrating life. So, uh, in our, when I distributed the assignment for a pastors to preach on, um, today is actually assigned to a topic that is like coming before the presence of God and uh, assured of his, of his rest and his comfort so that, uh, you know, he lifts our burdens away from us or off of our shoulders so that we can actually celebrate his goodness. Um, so I officially said it's like uh, rest in his presence or Sabbath or something. That was, uh, that's actually the schedule for today. And I think you will notice that uh, uh, this morning, Pastor Jing was here actually uh, preached along those lines. Uh, I think this evening uh, our preacher will also be talking about uh, uh, that topic about just uh, coming to the presence of the Lord and being able to celebrate because uh, our burdens are being are lifted up, you know, uh, uh, off our shoulders. But let me also just uh, maybe announce, you know, uh, instead of me preaching on that uh, topic today, I'll be preaching on the topic assigned next Sunday. Okay, so I'm giving you an advance uh, message. This is uh, because, and let me also invite you uh, that, uh, that instead of me preaching at our 10 o'clock service uh, on Sunday, it's going to be our sister, Pastora, uh, servant of the Lord coming from the U.S., who is also one of us here, um, Arlene Oreo Lavake. So, Pastor Arlene used to be our missionary, used to be part of our, uh, you know, of, of, of this church, the Orios, like Ara, Arisa, uh, Arlene. And, uh, and so, she'll be around and uh, be sharing the word by Sunday at 10 o'clock service. So, she will be taking over my slot. I'll be around also, of course. So, I get to preach uh, the message that's supposed to be preached on Sunday. I choose to take up this. So again, our uh, focus is celebrating life. Celebrating life. I'm sure we have been to parties, Christmas celebrations, Christmas parties, office, uh, schools, um, you know, just celebrating maybe home groups, Bible studies. We've been celebrating this week. Amen. Have you been to a party at least last week? Amen. How many? How many parties? Oh, uh, almost every day. <laughs> and, um, and we won some of those uh, raffles. Amen? Okay. Um, I went to a party last night. Yes. Very exciting. Um, yeah. Our, our, our um, exchanging of gifts was done in a very unique manner. Yes. Um, we were given numbers, initial numbers, so we get to claim our gifts because we have this number. And uh, I think there were nine of us. So after the gifts were distributed because, you know, they were numbered, uh, I mean, you, you have a number, you go over the table, go over the gifts, and then you, you get to choose. So the number one gets to choose the, the best the gift. But then the second round of numbers, uh, gets to steal your gift. Yes. So now the gifts change hands. But then we didn't realize that there's actually a third round of numbers. And uh, we, had, uh, we had fun. Amen. Because uh, I bought, for me and my wife, I bought this uh, kit, the first aid kit. It has 95 items in it. It's just a very compact one. And everyone was looking at them. There's two. I was wondering, I want that one. Okay, so they got it. And then uh, only to realize that when the numbers are, uh, makes ra make rounds again, and then it, it gets uh, stolen by, by, uh, by the others in the party. Wow. I, I really like the excitement. Hallelujah. So um, my wife and I uh, got the cash. Okay. Because no one, want, no one got the cash. <laughs> And I said, uh, mukhang pera naman kaming dalawa, so okay na sa amin yun. <laughs> nah. Okay. Uh, because the, the money was, you know, uh, uh, okay. 
It was there. I won't tell you how, how many thousands the money was, but nobody wants the money. <laughs> Just uh, kidding. And uh, they all want all these things. So, uh, yeah, stealing. Can you imagine you have all this and you really want it? You hold on to it and then it's stolen, no? Okay, exciting. Hallelujah. So, parties. And um, so, as we go to the Word of God and the topic that I was supposed to be... Uh, uh, touching next Sunday is on counting your blessing. Counting your blessings. Amen. Are you blessed this morning? Amen. So what are the blessings? Well, you know, God has blessed us so much. So much blessing this Christmas and all the year. Um, soon we will be doing this, the final uh, week actually of this year. And, um, you know, the Lord has been so good. And a lot of times we, we think about blessings and we really think about, uh, you know, the nice things that we got during this Christmas. But there are so many blessings that we can really uh, just be thanking the Lord for if we begin to count them. If we begin to just realize that God has actually indeed blessed us in so many ways. Uh, not only in material or finances or anything, but you know, God has continually blessed us. So, may I just request you all to stand please. And have your Bibles ready, okay? Our Bibles. Um, wala po akong kodigo, but maybe we can do this. Uh, we take our allegiance to the Word. We say our Bible declaration, okay? If you have a Bible, cell phone, or whatever um, gadget that you have that has a cell phone, I mean, a Bible app on it, then just raise it up before the Lord, okay? Together we say, this is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today for God to speak a word that will change my life forever. And so um, as we look at the word, let me read from the book of Psalms. This is from the book of Psalms. Okay? It says here, Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, or in other version, it's compassion, who satisfies you with good. Now, uh, this is actually... Uh, in an says good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. By the way, this is taken from the English Standard Version. And another, another uh, set of verses here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 6, it says, The Lord... Let me see, I'm having a problem. Okay, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed... He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again, we would like to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity that we are gathered together uh, to glorify your name, to worship you, to give honor to your name, because you have been so good to all of us. Also, we are here, gathered as your people, as a family, to interact with each other, to just rejoice together in your presence. Father, as we come to your word, we pray that you will bless our time together. And may this time be a time of reflection and growing together in your word. Bless the remainder of this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we clap unto the Lord? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Also, we would like to greet those of our brethren watching uh, on live streaming. 
God bless you po. Uh, hopefully, you can still, I mean, you can keep um, joining us in our uh, services here at Capital City. Welcome. Okay, we go to the Word, and um, uh, today we talk about counting your blessings. Counting your blessings. Um, the whole topic for the month is called celebrating life, meaning that life is really indeed uh, is supposed to be celebrated because life is from the Lord. We cannot extend our lives. I mean, we can we can take uh, we can take uh, supplemental medicines. We can take uh, foods uh, that are healthy, eat healthy vegetables and everything. But there is no way we can extend our lives. Actually, our life is measured by God. And uh, in Psalms 139, it says that the Lord knows the number of our days. The Lord knows the number of our days. Amen. And if we get to, um, uh, you know, move on to 2020, hallelujah, that's another year. But uh, as I, there was uh, one guy who said that when you live your life, you can live your life as if this is your last day. But you can always plan your lives as if you can, you know, will stay for uh, more years, maybe 10 years more. So you can plan. You can plan your lives like, you know, you're staying for, you know, uh, 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 maybe 20, to those of us that are younger, maybe 30 years. Okay? But when you live your life, make sure that you live it in a way that, uh, that this is your maybe last day or last week so that you keep on doing what needs to be done. And you don't linger around and uh, being uh, uh, diverted, uh, your attention being diverted by so many things. So, okay, so uh, counting your blessings. So what are the blessings God has bestowed upon you, that has, God has given you this year? Um, there are so many blessings, of course. And um, as we talk at, uh, look at this um, blessings of God, there are some categories of blessings. And I hope uh, you recognize them. Okay? Categorizing your blessings, for example. One, family. Okay? Family is a blessing from the Lord. Amen po ba? Family. Sino po ang family? One, is your spouse. Amen? Those of you that have spouses with you or at home, God has given you a spouse. Hallelujah. Thank God for your spouse. Amen? Walang nag amen Delikado yan. Ibang ibig sabihin. Okay. Uh, you have a spouse. You have kids. You have kids. Amen. Mas maraming amen sa kids kaysa sa spouse, no? Hallelujah. Are you glad? Are you blessed with a spouse? Say amen. Okay. You are blessed with kids. Say amen. Malakas talaga ang kids. Okay. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, we have parents, and we thank God for parents. They may not be perfect, but they're parents. God provided them for us. I just really thank God. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, I just love uh, when I recall, you remember my, my parents, my mother and uh, my father. Uh, just, I cry a lot when I remember them, actually. My father is still alive, but I don't get to spend that much time with him. So, you know, how I wish... I can spend time with him. He's old. My father is now 84. The only one left of uh, five siblings. And, uh, and by the way, when my, after a few years when my mother, mother passed away, um, my father got married at age 75. He remarried. Hallelujah. But of course, they have no children. And so uh, when he was 75, he married a widow that was 53 years old. So I'm glad that he actually married because it'd be so lonely if he hadn't gotten married. Amen. If you are a widow or a widower and thinking of getting married, uh, let me pray for you. But, uh, you know, my, my father indeed got married. And uh, good for him. There's somebody with him now. So you have parents, you have siblings. Um, there are blessings that are maybe material, for example. And if you, God has given you a job, God has given you a company to run, a business, uh, those, these are blessings from the Lord. 
I'm just trying to uh, recall some of these blessings. Um, material blessings, spiritual blessings, maybe, um, you know, a church. Uh, is the church, is capital city a blessing to you? I mean, literally, is it a blessing to you? Uh, do you say, Lord, thank you, thank you that uh, I have capital city for a church? I mean, you're not saying that this is a perfect church, you know, our church is better than, you know, that church, no. But it's just really saying, Lord, thank you that I'm a part of this family. This is a spiritual family. And to have a family is really a blessing. If the Lord has not given me a church, uh, would be, you know, I don't know where I'll be today. But the Lord has um, brought me into a church, a fellowship, strengthening me inwardly and making me useful for His kingdom. I thank God. I thank God. Um, God brings people into your life. I never thought that Pastor Eric or Atilili will mention about Pastor Ferris. And uh, yes, uh, you know, God brings people to our lives. And, uh, and we thank God for them. Amen. Please remember those people that God has brought into your life. And begin to thank God for them. They are blessings to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, uh, Another that I mentioned there is that you got you have to enjoy your blessings. If God has given you a spouse, please enjoy your spouse. Amen. Come on, God has given you a spouse. Yes, enjoy your spouse. Amen. You're, some of you are asking, like Pastor Marge, how how you know how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that at at 60 or at 65 or at 70 ah uh, don't ask me <laughs> it's just that if these are blessings from the lord you know well maximize it <laughs> for you for god's glory and uh, for your pleasure and uh, you know god has uh, bless you this is a blessing from the lord spend time you utilize you appreciate you're grateful last sunday we talked about um you know, establishing that, uh, cultivating a grateful heart. Uh, you know, just, just say, thank you, Lord. Uh, another issue here about blessings is that you are supposed to share. Everyone says, share. Yeah. Okay, we are supposed to share. And I like the concept that we have about Christmas. Although a lot of us would still think about what we can get. Um, I'm really... I'm really humbled by so many of you, uh, you know, wrapping something to give to Pastor Mars. Please, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for some of you. Uh, you I, I tell you, it's a pleasure to serve the Lord here at Capital City. And I am and my wife, we are forever grateful for the opportunity. And please don't make it uh, a burden in your part to come up with something uh, to give to your pastor. I, 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 I mean not a burden. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that it should not be a burden on your part. I am already thankful to God that I am here given the opportunity to be the pastor of the church that I served so many years. Amen. I hope, I hope it is clear, but but let me also say thank you, thank you, uh, deep in my heart, and my wife, thank you. I talked to my wife, and we said, I said, uh, you know, my wife got this big box from the U.S. Uh, because she used to minister to a, a squatter area, you know, um, we call this uh, informal settlers, and so she gets this box from time to time. And um, l lately, I, I told her, it's, it's not, not really expensive ones, but just simple use things from some friends. Uso din po ang okay-okay sa USA. So, dig it okay-okay there, put it in a box, and send it here. And you open it up, it's all made in China. It's just like, you know, our okay-okay here sometimes. But anyway, uh, so I told my wife, uh, you go, you know, go over them, but... Ah, 
you know, we don't need anything out of this box. Uh, because we need to be giving a lot. We need to be giving away. Because we don't have a big house. And you can imagine all the boxes coming in. So I said, even the box itself has to go. Okay. <laughs> Not just the content, but the box has to go. So, uh, uh, yes, honestly, we don't own a house. Um, we have a very simple car. That's all we have in this life. And that's more than enough. Because I have a spouse. I have children. I have grandchildren. I mean, <laughs> grandchild. Um, I'm content, contented. There is contentment in my heart. And we don't run after anything in this world. Yes, we don't. We still pray for a house and lot. We still pray for maybe a brand new car one day. But we don't run after them. I'm telling you this because I, I told my children about this. I said, I have, I have enough of God's grace. and I have enough of God's blessing. And I don't want to pursue anything in this life except to serve the Lord. That's all. Amen. Uh, I'm a little emotional, but I just want to say thank you. But don't make it you know, a burden on your part. Don't, don't burden yourself with, with uh, something for your pastor. God has been good to us. God has blessed us so much. Amen. I hope you understand what I mean. Uh, it doesn't have to be a burden. It doesn't have to be a burden. We can be giving uh, within our means. We can be giving within, within our capacity. And that's more than enough as far as the Lord is concerned. So, um, we share. We share. In Scripture, um, it's just unique about sharing. Sharing your blessing with those in need. Now, in Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, uh, there's something still in the New Testament about this topic, but more morally of the New Testament, where it says, when God has blessed you, this is God commanding His people, when, when you go into the land that God will bring you into, and you will be you're planting your seeds, you know, you're harvesting, and uh, God has given you abundance, don't ever neglect. And there are three categories of, of people that should not be neglected. One is, the fatherless, the orphans, the orphans, the widows, and the aliens. Uh, sabi sa akin, somebody told me, Pastor Mars, uh, that cannot be true to the Philippines. I said, why not? Because sabi niya, ang mga widows sa Pilipinas, mayayaman eh. Hello? I mean, well, yes, but if you look at the Old Testament, it's the man, it's the husband, that really provides for the family. So that if, you know, a widow, is, you know, is there, you really think that he, she really needs a lot of help. And so the Lord says, don't, you know, when God has blessed you with all these material blessings, don't forget, don't ever forget the widow. It just means that those in need, orphans, well, a widow may be taking care of children. Um... The fatherless has no mother, has no father. So the more that we should be thinking about them this Christmas. And of course, the aliens. Who are the aliens? Are the strangers that come to them. And that, that they should take care of strangers. Now, if you were here um, last Thursday, when it was the women who were in charge of the morning, uh, Simbang, Simbang Pasco, Thursday, uh, the, the women, the FW, were in charge, and they had the preacher, uh, Sister Christy. Are you here? Okay. Um, Sister Christy was mentioning about, uh, uh, you know, a story or a play that uh, they did while still in grade school, and the text that she was uh, sharing from was Matthew 25. It was actually the text for where where God gathers nations. And that the nation, nations were placed on his right, right side, and other nations on the left side. Those on the right side, this Matthew 25, the, you know, the parable of the nations. God saying to those on the right, he says, you know, um, thank you, 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 I was angry, you fed me, and I was 
naked, you clothed me, I was in prison, you visited me, I was, you know, all of this. And then the people say, say Lord, uh, we, never, we never saw you naked, never saw you uh, hungry, never uh, encountered you naked. And God says, whatever you did to, this, uh, to, the, to the little ones, to this, the rest of the brethren, you did it to me. And then, of course, on the left, he says, you know, you, I was naked, you did uh, clothe me, I was in prison, you did not visit me, um, all of this. And they were asking the same question. We, ne we never saw you. And God says, no, uh, I was there. So, when God has blessed you with something, share your blessing. Tell your neighbors, share. Usap tayo mamaya. Share. So, well, aside from those actual needs that we see around us, we also have worthy causes. For example, the church, uh, we have projects, for example, like church planting. Pastor Eric was mentioning about the ministry, possibly um, in Tarlac area. And there's actually a daughter church that we have here in Hirona. Um, the pastor is his uh, son-in-law. And so they will be doing ministry. They will be helping out in this um, daughter church and it is a daughter church of capital city we have a new church in that area amen i i understand it's a very promising flourishing congregation hallelujah amen we have another church in hirona tarlac a clap unto the lord amen <laughs> hallelujah yes so we you know we have we have missions offering for that for example let me just probably remind you we only emphasize missions on the third Sunday of the month, but we can always give to missions because in our in our giving at or tight envelope, we do have the missions there, and you can always put you know the amount that you want to contribute to the missions offering any Sunday of the month. And um, our goal for this month, for this year, uh, by the way, is uh, one one point six million. We are close to a million, and uh, uh, it's 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 like yeah, this is the second to the last Sunday of the year. Hallelujah! And so, if you think that the Lord has blessed you and you want to give, you want to give more to missions, just put in your uh, missions offering. Amen, Papa. Missions offering goes to our church planting. Um, in the Philippines, we have the First Square Philippines has programs in church planting. One is called Church by the Highway. Church by the highway. This is actually a prayer or an effort to plant churches along highways, along major transnational uh, highways. Another highway is called transnavigational highways. We would like to place churches in these um, areas that are visible. So we want them along highways. Um, and then there are pastors requesting that what about if we plant a church? in not along the highway maybe interior part of a town but it's not in a highway can we do it well we said okay we create another program now we don't only have the church by the highway we also have a church by the byways hello so pro square philippines has a program called church by the highway in major national highways and we also have a church planting program called Church by the Byways, meaning the interior part of towns. And I said, but there is another category that we are planting. I said, Pastor Mars, we only have two categories. I said, no, there's a third one. My way. Okay. <laughs> you plant a church. I did it my way. Okay, so... Uh, so if you if you are planting a church along the highway under the program called church by the highway there's some help in terms of support finances from the national office um, if you plant a church on the byways meaning the interior part not along the major highways that's a church by the byways there's still some financial assistance that goes uh, that will be extended but if you did it your way, nothing. There's nothing, okay? So please don't do it. <laughs> okay, so um, we have your, you have blessings. God has blessed you. You can support the programs of the church. You can 
of course, give assistance to people in need, but you can also join other causes. Like, um, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard about Compassion Program or Compassion Philippines. And we are a recipient of that. We are partners with Compassion here at Capital City. Uh, those of you that are not aware, we have uh, a ministry for children, uh, you know, reaching out to children um, across uh, a large area, actually not just on the vicinity here, but we do have children, uh, I, mean, in, I mean, many barangays, not just the barangay around this church. Uh, we are the largest compassion-funded program in the world. Amen. Ulitin ko po yan. Let me repeat. Capital City is in partnership with Compassion to a ministry of the underprivileged of children and even parents and our program with close to, with even over a thousand kids at one time, we are the largest program in the world. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Please remember that your church, Capital City First Square Church, we are not only concerned with, you know, with the physical church here that we would like to take care of our building or take care of our needs here at church or our pastor. We are concerned with extending uh, partnership uh, because we, we would like to serve God's people and even our community. Hallelujah. So we thank God for that. These are part of God's blessing, sharing of God's blessing. This Christmas, um, you know, you can always do something special to bless your community. Hallelujah. So, let me move on. These are some of these blessings. Amen. You see these blessings? Uh, the, the beers actually represents friendship. And even the man with glasses, with, uh, yeah, Actually, these are some of these blessings. I'm just showing them. One, maybe there's blessing of friendship. There's blessing of family. There's blessing of, of money, of dollars. Amen. There's blessing of friendship with uh, an ongoy and, uh, you know, that, that, that monkey is called named Mok Mok. Yes. I uh, got that in Koron. Actually, she's a girl, <laughs> a woman. I mean, a girl a monkey. She died uh, a year after I took that picture. Okay? And this guy, uh, you know, uh, on a coconut tree, uh, before proceeding, um, he has a tablet. Well. So if you learn to look at these things, they are blessings. This is not just one dimensional blessing. But God blesses us in so many ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, okay, I'm uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, those are, those are partnerships. Those are blessings. We look at this guy. Uh, yeah, this guy praying with uh, his son. That's a blessing also to have children. This is bless blessing of companionship. Yeah. Uh, blessing of family, of course, extended family with all the siblings, uh, you know, nieces, nephews, and everything. So God is blessing us, God has blessed us, and God will continue to bless us this coming year. Amen. We believe that God is not done with us yet. So we have more of this, more friendship, more material blessings, more financial blessings. But again, when you are blessed, don't forget that you are supposed to share. God intends. That's a blessing. Now, if you recognize that place, that's, that, that place is a blessed church. Amen. This is Capital City First Square Church on one prayer meeting. Amen. Just joining hands, praying together. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be part of Capital City First Square Church? Amen. Clap unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm just... I'm just trying to, uh, you know, make us aware of these blessings. There's just so many blessings around us. Amen. And so, again, let me read that verse. But I'd like to summarize uh, in these verses the blessings that has given us. And some of these blessings, we may not be so aware of them, actually. 
because God has given this to us and we are focusing on other blessings like maybe material, like maybe um, finances, and like maybe friendship and relationships. But God has given us other blessings as well. And this is Psalms chapter 103. Again, let me repeat this, these verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Let us read together verse 2. Ready, go. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. So God has actually given us lots of benefits. God is blessing us, and we need to remember, and we need to begin to count these blessings. One. God has blessed us with a blessing of forgiveness. God forgives. God forgives. Now, we can actually, are looking at this, and the tenses, the tense in Scripture, the time in Scripture, uh, we could easily say this is a past tense. And that is true. But if you mean past tense because they've been done and they have happened and they occurred in the past which is also true but that does not reflect the real picture of what the scripture means for us today when it says that god actually has forgiven that's just one time in the past god does not only forgive in the past he forgives even today amen that's why uh, god willing um you know, when the, when, when the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 9, when he's mentioning about prayer, uh, the Lord said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, uh, we receive this forgiveness. And in application, we need to be extending this forgiveness to people who need them. Amen. If you receive, you freely receive, you have to be freely giving also. You are receiving these blessings freely. You give freely. Amen. So if we are receiving forgiveness, I tell you, this is very therapeutic. As we think about the end of this year, 2019, I'm just calling out to each one. Let me tell you, if you can open your heart and begin to think of people who have wronged you, who are indebted to you, as Jesus said, let me encourage you. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Number one, forgive your spouse. Hello. I mean, before you can go out, you always have your spouse with you. I mean, if he's still alive or she's still with you. And lots of conflict happen between spouses, including me and my wife. But I just thank God that my wife always forgives me. Amen. She's a forgiver. Hello. And they may be asked, what about you, Pastor Mars? Of course, I have to learn from my wife. Because a lot of times I'm still angry and she's already smiling. And I'm still pouting. So talo ako. Okay? So I better smile also. Amen. Forgive. It says here that God has actually forgiven us. See, the word, part of the benefit that we get from God is forgiveness. You see, when you don't forgive, it's like a burden that you're carrying. Because when you ask forgiveness from God, you will be forgiven. But when you don't forgive, that burden is actually on you. The burden is always on the person not forgiving. And some, some would say, Pastor Mars, I'm just waiting for him or her to ask forgiveness. Well, asking forgiveness, the person to, ask, to be asking forgiveness is immaterial to the condition of your heart. Because to forgive is really in the heart. So that you just have to really forgive from your heart. And allow God to work in the person's life. One day he will come or she will come. But God is talking to you. Sometimes, that's why sometimes if you come to a church and you hear a sermon about forgiveness and you said, and your, your spouse is not around, 
you will keep on thinking about your spouse. She should have been here. Dapat nandito siya, pastor, tama yan. Para sa asawa ko yan. Hello. Kung ikaw andi dito, this is for you. Hello. As we think about a new year, begin to think about what to release. And one of the best things that you can release at the end of this year is forgiveness. Hello. You want to be blessed? Release forgiveness. What other benefit that God has given us? It says here, following each other is the blessing of physical healing. Physical healing. This Christmas, a lot of us would be, you know, uh, have colds, coughing. But there are other issues, more serious issues, really. I would like to tell you that part of a heritage in the first world family is we happen to believe that or our part of our cardinal doctrine represented by when well, where are our symbols but anyway uh, actually the color is blue that stands for healing you see a four square flag uh, color blue stands for healing and so we believe that God did not only heal back then but God is and will continue to heal even today. He is healing today and He will continue to heal. So we come to Him. And sometimes these are connected. If you are bitter, you cannot forgive. You store up all these negative emotions, bitterness, resentment, and forgiveness in your heart. You are actually so susceptible to a lot of sickness. Like super acidity in your, in your stomach, for example. Anxiety and all this. All these attacks are a result of negative emotions in our hearts. So that when we release forgiveness, you are not only releasing forgiveness, lightening your heart, you're actually also helping your body recover from those sickness. People that, are, that can easily forgive, people that don't uh, take this, you know, store them in their hearts, are people who can live happily, they can, they can, they can be gracious, they can be thankful, they can be, uh, you know, kind and even generous. Why? Because they are outgoing personalities. Last Sunday we said that we cultivate a grateful heart. And one of the hearts, or one type of heart that cannot that is so difficult um, to be discouraged, I mean, uh, difficult to be thanking God for, is a heart that has been sown the seed of discouragement. The seed that is always looking at, at the failures and everything. The heart that is always looking at the negative things in life. So that today, if we release forgiveness, as we approach the, the, the close of the year, this, this is the only blesses us in terms of of emotions being healed, but also even physical healing can come to us. If you are sick today, God can heal you. Because healing, physical healing, is part of our heritage when we come to the Lord. He does not only promise us forgiveness of sins, but also healing of our bodies. Amen. Clap unto the Lord this morning. I'm just trying to uh, recap the verses. The verses in Psalms 103, part, not the whole chapter, but part of this. In verse 4, it says, Who redeems your life? Who redeems your life from the pit? What is actually a pit? God redeems us. What is the difference between salvation and redemption? The redem redemption has a concept of being uh, taken or being hostage, taken captive. See, people have been, for, God has forgiven you, but a lot of times we are still in captivity. Why? Why do we still remain in captivity? Because we refuse to let go. And it says there, one concept of being redeemed is this. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Now, what does the pit here uh, symbolizes or represents? You see, in our lives, there's a lot of times that 
Because we don't pray that much, we don't seek guidance of God, God's guidance that much, we fall into the trap of the enemy. We fall into the trap of this world. We fall into the trap that, that, of the snares, as the Bible calls them, the snares of the evil one. That's why we need to be discerning. The Lord has given us the spirit of discernment. We need to be, have the, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. And because of this, if we don't exercise these gifts from the Holy Spirit, we are actually entrapped a lot of times, ensnared a lot of times. We come into agreement, we come into a, uh, a partnership, for example. We agree with some friends, with some groups to do these things. And then all of a sudden we realize we are trapped. The Bible calls it like a pit. You are actually in a pit. But thank God that even if something happened to you, now you are here, you realize that you are deep into a pit. God can deliver you. There is deliverance in God. This is part of the blessing. God can work His way miraculously so that you are being delivered. God can deliver you in whatever pit you are in right now. If you have been snared, I think uh, that's the Tagalog word for that. Nabitag. You got hooked. You didn't realize it. Any of you feeling like, Pastor, this Christmas, something happened. I'm, I've been snared. I've been caught. I tell you, God can deliver you out of those pit. This nothing impossible. There's really nothing impossible, including the ones, the situations that we have created ourselves unknowingly and have stared, snared us, actually. There is deliverance in God. Amen. Clap unto the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> And um, it says here that he does, he does not only forgive, it is not working. Yeah. Hello, Ayan. Okay. Another is in verse 4, it says, He crowns. The word. You can actually replace the word crowns. You can actually uh, replace that with the word lavishes. In other words, it does not only redeem you or save you. Now that you are His child, it is God's pleasure to lavish you. Anong Tagalog dyan? To shower you. That's another word. To shower you with all, with everything. That's good. One is enough, meaning needs are provided. But second concept of God being our Jehovah Jireh, the one that meets our need, is that He's not only interested in giving us like three meals a day, He also is interested to give us dessert. Hello. We, you know, because it is our, we, we do dessert after meals. And God is interested to give dessert. And aside from the dessert that God prepares, He also gives us more. And the Bible says, so that we have something to share to those in need. So, enough, more than enough, and even beyond more than enough to be able to share. That's how God lavishes us. That's how God crowns us with His favor. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap unto the Lord. Whoa, hallelujah. These are the benefits. I hope it works. God satisfies. Say, satisfies. 
Imagine. Now, this is a song, old song. Uh, remember that song? As the deer pants for the water, so my soul, my soul runs after thee. So that's really a picture of a deer being chased maybe by, by dogs or by uh, uh, people, by hunters. And this deer is really just panting for water. David says, Psalms 23, what, what did they say about, about you know, drinking? He says, you know, he, 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 the Lord brings him over by the streams of water. Wow. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay. He restores my soul. He leads me okay, in green pastures and brings me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Wow. Amen. Clap unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's begin to expand our concept of God's goodness. Expand it so that it includes even you extending help to others because that's part of God's provision for you, being able to share. Amen. So this Christmas, learn to share because God's abundance also means not only meeting your own needs or your children's needs, but also being able to share to others. God satisfies. Are you satisfied? Amen. Hallelujah. So let me just uh, summarize this. Actually, I'd like to borrow... Uh, let me, sorry. Uh, last Sunday, I mentioned about... Uh, let me see. This is, this is how it is pictured. The, the verses that I put there is Psalms 91. Uh, one of the Psalms that you can memorize, actually, my, uh, Psalms 91. It's a long Psalm. But it's so rich and it comes to God's goodness. Okay? Psalms 91. It says, the verse, verse 1 there says, uh, He that dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Wow. You see, you know Shalom? Shalom is actually the, uh, the actual uh, greeting for Hebrews and Jews that's official. Shalom. It actually means peace, health, um, abundance. That's shalom. Okay? In Tagalog, we say mabuhay. You are not saying mabuhay ka. No, he's not dead. Para mabuhay. No? You are actually saying uh, mabuhay. Ang hirap ipa, ipaliwanag eh. But you are not dead. Para mabuhay ka. No, you're, you're actually... May you, have, may you live in abundance. May you have abundance. And that's the same also uh, concept about uh, greetings of the Muslims. Assalamu alaikum. Can you get it's, it's, uh, greet each other? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum, alaikum salam. Yung po ang sagot. Okay? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Okay? Sige. Yung po. Parang peace be with you. Huh? Um, sa Bisaya... We say, maayong Pasko, lahat ng Bisaya dyan. Okay? Maayong Pasko, o bulahang, bagong tuig. Bulahan. Bula, the bulahang is from the word bulahan. Bulahan is the Cebuano for bless. Bless. In Tagalog, we say, maligayang Pasko at maligo sa bagong taon. Ah, maligong bagong taon. And we say actually, mabuhay, viva, uh, we say peace, and in masses we say peace be with you, and also with you. Okay? It's okay, boy, eh? <laughs> you know. Because we, we know God is really blessing us. He is a God that blesses. Wow, hallelujah. Um, and let me borrow this last Sunday's uh, sharing. Uh, count your blessings instead of crosses count your gains instead of losses count your joys instead of woes count your friends instead of foes by the way ha uh, um yung mga kalaban natin batiin na, may kanta doon di ba oh, 
Oh, Pasko na kasi. Okay? Count your smiles instead of tears. Count your courage instead of fears. Amen. Um, yes. There's a song they would like to sing. Uh, maybe Pastor Bong can help us with the keyboard. But uh, <clears throat> maybe my wife can help me also. Uh, it says, Count your blessings, name them one by one. Okay, do you have it? Um, this is an old song. I'd like for, uh, for us to just begin to count our blessings. We will be entering another year. God willing, I'm inviting you to our um, New Year's Eve service. And let me tell you what I plan to do so that you are prepared. New Year's Eve service, that's December 31, 6 o'clock in the evening. You come and on a small sheet of paper, you write on that sheet of paper the people that you want to forgive, the emotions that you want to let go, the bad things that happened to you this year, the things that you want to let go, whatever that is in your life. I will be giving instructions, more of them, and we will burn them not inside but outside hello okay lang ba don't write the name of your husband or your wife because we will burn them we are just maybe the, the anger that the unforgiveness the bitterness okay whatever we go around we come inside this door again and i'll give you a paper again and that will be titled My Wildest Dream for 2020. But you have to let go first before you can dream. If you don't let go, you don't dream. Amen? I believe God has blessed us and more are in store for us. Shall we all rise up? And... Um, Okay, do we have one? Uh, have the words? Okay. Okay, this is the photo part. Okay. Count, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When upon life's bellows you are tempest toast, you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings, them, them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Maybe it's a pang stanza. Are you burdened with? With a load of care Does the cross seem heavy You are called to bear Count your many blessings Every doubt will fly And you will be singing As the days go Coral Park Count your blessing Name them one by one Count your blessing, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. 
count your many blessings, see what God has done. Yun po muna, no? Perhaps that's a very, very um, accurate song to sing. Even the burdens, we can end up actually with singing for as long as we begin to count and be mindful that God has blessed us with so many blessings. Hallelujah. Again, it can be blessings of family, material blessings, spiritual blessings in Christ. Let's just keep on counting these blessings. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Forgive us if we're not mindful, not recognizing a lot of this that you have blessed us with. Father, forgive us for being ungrateful. You have blessed us with so many, many blessings. Even blessings that we fail to recognize on a daily basis. The graces that you have showered us with. Indeed, you are faithful. You are compassionate. And your tender mercies abides, Lord, forever. You are our Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides for our needs. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals our diseases. You are our Jehovah Nessi, the one who leads us to victory. For we are more than conquerors in you. Today, again, we thank you. Because as we approach the close of this year, 2020, we are able to release the burdens. We are able to let go of, of negative emotions so that we are prepared for the coming year 2020 and empty ourselves of all garbage, empty our hearts of all that, that, that are poisonous and that uh, pollutes our minds and our imaginations and begin to fill our hearts and our imaginations, our minds with the things of God and the things of the Spirit and the things of heaven. Father, thank you because we know that as the new year would come, it will bring new blessing for your people. We're excited for what you're going to do in our lives and through our lives this coming year. All glory belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Clap for all the blessing that God has given us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless Paul. We can all be seated now.